Uh, next topic, child care. As we announced on Monday, uh, we were, we've been uh, engaged in a uh, very uh, thorough uh, emergency planning process as a way to develop operating guidelines to ensure that uh, child care uh, is available for health care and other uh, lifeline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. And to drive home how important a piece of uh, social infrastructure child care is in our state, uh, 71% of all North Dakota children ages 0 to 5 have all parents uh, in the uh, the, their workforce, and 78% of all children with ages 6 to 12 have all parents in the workforce, and this reflects the strong work ethic in North Dakota, and it reflects the high workforce participation uh, that we have, and I think that, you know, all of us who are parents uh, know that our great, greatest concern as parents is about the, the health and safety of our children, and during a time like this in particular, and particularly parents that uh, are continuing to go to work uh, to do the important aspects of keeping Keeping our economy rolling and continuing to deliver, uh, you know, medical care, law enforcement, uh, and uh, fire protection—all the things that that our lifeline workers do—that uh, this is a deep concern. So we went into this planning process with earnest. And number one objective of this planning process is to protect the health of our children, their families, and the child care workers that care for them. The second objective was to provide child care for health, safety, and other lifeline worker households. And the third one, which is very important uh, because we're facing both an economic crisis and a a health care crisis is to sustain sustain the child care sector during this emergency and its recovery uh, because the child care uh, is essential to every business in North Dakota, whether you're a small business a business, a medium business, a large business, in every sector, if you have team members working for you in North Dakota, there is a, a 7 out of 10 chance or higher that someone in your organization that worked for you was able to work for you because somebody else was, was helping helping to provide child care uh, in a safe and healthy way during the day so those employees could be at work. So we need a fully functioning child care system when this pandemic ends and when our economy gets back on in, on track. And that's why there's an incredible amount of work that went into crafting uh, this guidance and this program. We got input from child care providers uh, of all sizes, from the smallest in the state, uh, including people people that deliver care in their homes up to the large centers uh, that we have in some of our larger metro areas. Uh, input from the... Thank you, Governor. This initiative calls for doing three things. One, publishing modified operating practices for child care facilities to increase safety during the second epidemic. It also is providing emergency operation grants to child care providers who are licensed in the state who continue to serve both emergency, who continue to serve both during the emergency and during the recovery, and coordinating with existing child care providers and participating school districts to ensure adequate child care opportunities for K-5 children who are in health, safety, and other lifeline worker households. I'll now give a 10,000 foot view of each piece of the plan. More detail is being posted online as we speak and will be shared with providers later this evening on a, on a conference call. Staff with the same children as much as possible and staggering and limiting the use of common areas. Providers should also limit the access to the facility as much as possible. We've provided a list of screening questions that must be asked each day by the staff, caregivers, and parents before their children can enter the facility. The plan also includes guidelines for meals, operating practices, but also to help sustain the child care industry through this period of significant disruption. The emergency grants will be available to all child care providers licensed by the state. Those who accept the grants, our ability to meet basic health and safety needs during this crisis will be severely constrained, which puts us all at risk. As we talk about protecting our most vulnerable populations from COVID-19, our elderly and those with chronic health conditions, we can't lose focus on the future of our state, our children, and the impact that loss of employment and additional stress is in the home and having them.
The third major component of this initiative is child care for kids in kindergarten through grade 5 who are in health, safety, or other lifeline worker households. Where there is a community in need of outside of the existing child care providers and where the community conditions allow, we're encouraging K-12 school districts to offer child care on a temporary basis. They can accomplish this by utilizing ancillary school staff, such as paraprofessionals, and not credentialed teachers. These ancillary staff are already background checked and able to care for children of this age. To allow communities to do this where they deem it necessary and appropriate, the governor has amended the executive order signed last week that limited school access to essential staff only. Some districts are already planning to do this, including Bismarck Public Schools. So that's the child care initiative in a nutshell. Under our timeline, the modified operating practices will take effect on March 30th, and the first child care emergency operating grant payment will be made on April 10th. We know that parents, providers, school districts, and employers will have lots of questions about this. We appreciate those questions, and we will do our best to answer all of them, starting with our call with providers after this briefing. Details are available on the website for the Department of Human Services at www.nd.gov slash DHS. Click on the COVID-19 button. Details are in the provider resources area. Again, we have three goals here. First, to protect the health of children, families, and child care workers. Second, to provide child care for health, safety, and other lifeline worker households. And finally, help sustain the child care sector during the emergency and recovery because it's essential to every business in North Dakota. We absolutely must have a safe and fully functioning child care system now and when this pandemic ends and our economy gets back on track and we're confident that this plan can help us achieve that goal.